بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم linear control systems lecture number 21 i am your instructor yasir amir khan and i welcome you to this lecture this lecture is related to nyquist criterion the nyquist criterion relates the stability of the closed loop con control system to the open loop frequency response in open loop pole locations we are concerned about the closed loop system stability we are concerned about the stability of the closed loop transfer function in the frequency domain in terms of frequency in the frequency domain but what we do is that we try to find out that stability using the information available to us from the open loop transfer function open loop res frequency response open loop pole uh, locations we know that open loop uh, function is uh, when we open the feedback loop after the summer we go back uh, we pass through the plant the forward path then we go back through the feedback path sensor gain and then we come back to the summer before the summer we open the loop that is called an open loop function so open loop function is gh and from this gh and its pole locations we will find out the stability of the closed loop transfer function that is g upon 1 plus gh the second thing is that by virtue of the nyquist criterion the knowledge of the open loop system's frequency response gives us the information about the stability of the closed loop system that is something very you know elegant very useful that is uh, using the information from the open loop function using uh, the information that we get from gh uh, we'll try to find out the stability of g upon 1 plus gh we are basically concerned about the closed loop transfer function i repeat this thing lekin nyquist criterion jo hai ye bazahir thoda sa difficult topic lagta hai lekin ye bahut hi simple aasan sa topic hai ek do baatein agar aapki samajh mein aa jaye to bahut hi aasan topic hai is tarah se hai कि इसमें हम जो है एक मुश्किल चीज़ दैट इज जी ए पॉइंट वन प्लस जी एच एक क्लोज एक क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन है उसकी स्टेबिलिटी को जो है एक आसान चीज़ के ज़रिए से इनडायरेक्टली मालूम कर लेंगे यानी कि जो जी एच है अगर आप अपने जहन के अंदर इमेजिन करें लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन तो उसमें जो जी एच होता है इसको हम ओपन लूप फंक्शन कहते हैं ओपन लूप फंक्शन की मदद से उसमें जो पोल्स और ज़ीरोज़ की लोकेशन है उसकी मदद से फ्रीक्वेंसी uh, डोमेन की टेक्निक लगाते हुए जो कि हम अभी इस लेक्चर में पढ़ रहे हैं हम क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन जी एपॉन वन प्लस जी एच की स्टेबिलिटी मालूम करें ये मालूम करने के लिए जो है एक हम टेक्निक जो है वो आज के लेक्चर में और अगले चंद लेक्चर्स में पढ़ेंगे जिसकी मदद से हम जो है क्लोज लूप सिस्टम जी एपॉन वन प्लस जी एच की स्टेबिलिटी मालूम कर सकते हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ फ्रीकुनसी फ्रीकुनसी डोमेन में रहते हुए you can consider this system as uh, somewhat similar to the root focus where we you began with the open loop uh, system its uh, function open loop function that is gh and use that uh, the the location of poles and zeros from the open loop function to determine the stability of the closed loop system and to determine the locations of the uh, closed loop transfer function in the uh, similarly in the nyquist method we will we start with the open loop function that is gh and uh, from the uh, working and analysis we conclude results related to the closed loop system and its stability in free in terms of frequency in the frequency domain we are actually concerned about j11 plus gh but we try to work with that indirectly let us first understand the uh, term mapping what is meant by mapping what is mapping suppose we take a complex number on s plane complex plane you are familiar with complex plane it has a x axis which is the corresponds to the real part of the complex number and the imaginary axis which is related to the imaginary part if we uh, take a complex number on uh, that s plane and uh, we define a function f of s we have some function of s f of s it can be anything for example as shown over here we can have f of s equal to s square plus 2s plus 1 then 
when we put and then we take a complex number suppose the complex number is as you can see over here 4 plus j3 when we put this s into this function we replace s by this complex number and then we solve it we get another complex number and uh, this gives us another complex number that is 16 plus j30 now this we plot this uh, complex number on another complex plane on another, on, on another plane where the real part is the where the real axis x axis is the real axis and y axis is the imaginary axis that's a complex plane and we plot this uh, a result of f of s on that plane then we can call that plane f of s plane the second plane can be called the f of s plane the first plane was s plane the second plane can be called f of s plane and what we have done is that we have mapped the point in the s plane that is 4 plus j3 to the f of s plane ठीक है तो इसका मतलब जो है ना ये बड़ी फैंसी किस्म की टर्मिनोलॉजी है बट दी कांसेप्ट इज वेरी सिंपल आपके पास दो कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन्स हैं कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन का कांसेप्ट आप लोगों के पास होना चाहिए होगा पढ़ा होगा अपने कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस में और पिछले सिग्नल सिस्टम्स के कोर्स में पोल जीरोस आप प्लॉट करते आए हैं इसमें तो नई बात नहीं है कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन में जो है एक्स एक्सिस रियल एक्सिस होती है और जो वाई एक्सिस है इमेजिनरी एक्सिस होती है जो है तो हमारे पास दो कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन्स हैं इस एक तरह की इसी तरह की पहली कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन को हम कहते हैं जी एस प्लेन इसका नाम हम रख देते हैं एस प्लेन और दूसरी वाली कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन का नाम हम रख देते हैं एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन और एफ ऑफ एस एक फंक्शन है वो हम कहते हैं जी डिफाइन करते हैं या हमें पहले से दिया गया है इट्स अ फंक्शन ऑफ एस एंड इट कैन बी एनी थिंग कुछ भी हो सकता है किसी भी किस्म का फंक्शन हो सकता है हम यहाँ पर ले लेते हैं एफ ऑफ एस को एस स्क्वायर प्लस टू एस प्लस वन और हम कोई भी पॉइंट ले लें अगर अपनी पहली कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन में जिसको हम एस प्लेन कह रहे हैं मिसाल के तौर पे इसमें से फोर प्लस जे थ्री आप उठा लें इसको जब हम इस अपने फंक्शन में डालेंगे तो हमें एक और कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर मिलाएगा मिलेगा जो कि है इस केस में सिक्सटीन प्लस जे थर्टी हमने एस पॉइंट को उस पॉइंट को पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट को डाला एफ में तो हमें एक और कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर मिल गया उस कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर को हम दूसरी कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन पर जब प्लॉट कर देंगे तो वो भी कोई एक स्पेसिफिक लोकेशन मिल जाएगी हमें तो हम इस पूरे प्रोसेस को कहते हैं कि हमने मैपिंग की है हमने एस प्लेन से एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन में मैपिंग की है यानी कि हमने क्या किया है कि कोई सभी पॉइंट पिक करके उसको एफ ऑफ एस में डाला उससे जो कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर निकला उसको हमने दूसरी कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन पे लोकेट कर दिया दिस इज़ कॉल्ड मैपिंग ठीक हो गया नो लेट्स मूव अ स्टेप फॉरवर्ड Now we take uh, two planes. One is the S plane, and the other is f of s plane. And we take a function f of s that is a bit more sophisticated, complicated as compared to the uh, previous slide. You can see over here in this slide, in this equation, we have f of s defined as shown over here as a fraction. Numerator has the zeros, and from the den denominator we get the poles. Now, whatever the values of zeros and poles are, we are not at the moment concerned. We but we know that we have this f of s in form of some transfer function. And in the s plane, instead of just single point, we take many points, and we take the points in such a way that we get a closed path, which we call contour A. We get contour A in s plane, which you can see on the left hand side. Then what we do is that for each point on this path. This close path, this contour A, we pick up each point, and uh, Q, we pick up each point. We call it Q from the uh, contour in the left um, uh, plane, and then we put that value in f of s. And for each value, for each point of the contour A, we get some value of f of s. and we what we do is that we plot that value in the f of s plane the plane shown on the right hand side we keep on doing it for each and every point of contour a uh, what essentially we have done is that we have mapped that a closed path from s plane into f plane or f of s plane in the f of s plane we get another closed path uh, that is contour b now we are not going into the mathematical details and we are not uh, proving this thing but what, when we do this we get a map uh, we get a contour uh, we get a contour b that encircles the origin 
we are not proving this point but what you should note over here is that this for this particular type of f of s when we take any closed path and then we put it in the f of s and then we get another closed path on the uh, right side complex plane we get a closed path around the origin as shown over here this is what is shown over here in this slide i repeat this thing that uh, पिछली स्लाइड में आपने देखा था कि दो कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन्स थी एक एस प्लेन थी एक एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन थी यहाँ पे भी इसी तरह से हमारे पास दो प्लेन्स हैं एक एस प्लेन है और एक एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन है फ़र्क सिर्फ इतना है कि हमारा एफ ऑफ एस जो है वो थोड़ा सा ज़्यादा मुश्किल थोड़ा सा जो है ज़्यादा टिपिकल किस्म का है और वो हमारा ट्रांसफ़र फंक्शन है ट्रांसफ़र फंक्शन में आप न्यूमिनेटर देख सकते हैं डिनोमिनेटर देख सकते हैं न्यूमिनेटर से हमें जीरोज़ मिलेंगे डिनोमिनेटर से पोल्स मिलेंगे तो अब हम दूसरा काम ये हम कर रहे हैं कि जो हमारी एस प्लेन है उसमें हम एक पॉइंट नहीं ले रहे बल्कि बहुत सारे पॉइंट्स ले रहे हैं पॉइंट्स हैं एक पाथ की शक्ल में क्लोज लूप की शक्ल में एक रास्ता है कंटोर है इसको हम कंटोर ए कह रहे हैं उसकी शक्ल में उन तमाम पॉइंट्स में जो है उनकी अभी यहाँ पर तो वैल्यूज़ न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यूज़ गिवन नहीं है लेकिन उनकी कोई न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यूज़ हो सकती हैं हर लोकेशन की हम एक हर एक पॉइंट को उठा के एफ एफ एस में रखते हैं उसके नतीजे में हमें एक और पॉइंट मिलता है जिसको हम एफ प्लेन में या एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन जो कि आपको यहाँ पे राइट हैंड साइड वाली कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन नज़र आ रही है उसमें लोकेट कर तो हम पूरे के पूरे कंट्रोअर ए को इस एफ ऑफ एस की मदद से मैप कर देते हैं इन टू कंट्रोअर बी तो कंट्रोअर बी जो हमें मिलेगा ये एक समझ लें विदाउट प्रूफ ये एक प्रॉपर्टी है इसकी कि आपका जो क्लोज पाथ है वो यहाँ पर आपको औरिजन के गिरद जो है चक्कर काटता हुआ नज़र आएगा जैसे कि यहाँ पर नज़र आ रहा है तो इस स्लाइड के अंदर बस अपने जहन में ये पॉइंट जो है ना बिठा लें फिर हम इस बात को आगे बढ़ाते हैं अगली स्लाइड में नो ओवर हेयर वी हैव टू कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन इन दिस स्लाइड नंबर सेवन वी हैव अ कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड दैट इज कॉल्ड द एस प्लेन एंड ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड वी हैव अनदर कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन दैट इज आर एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन बट हेयर एफ ऑफ एस इज वन प्लस जी एच वेर जी इज द प्लान ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एच इज देंसर ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एंड आर एफ ऑफ एस इज वन प्लस जी एच नाउ ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड वी कैन सी दैट वी हैव सम पोल्स एंड सम जीरोज एंड वॉट वी आर डूइंग ओवर हेयर इज दैट एक्स शो दी पोल्स एंड दी सर्कल्स शो दी जीरोज we take a path contour a around these poles and zeros and then what we do is that we uh, try to map it to the right hand side complex plane now when we take this path as shown over here you can see that there is a pole out of this contour there are two poles in fact out of the contour out of this path for example v4 is out of this uh, path now if you use stand for a while on the location of this v4 and you look at the path as you can see for example you take it as a uh, railway track in form of a railway track and a train is moving on that track and you are standing at location v4 and you look at the uh, um, track from your location your eyesight your sight can be uh, considered as a vector and you look at the train that is moving around the this closed path which is a track when the train train makes one complete uh, uh, cycle around this track this contour uh, you move from you know your right hand side to your left hand side you can maximum move 180 degrees or less you cannot you will not be moving for a whole complete 360 degrees on the other hand if you stand inside the contour for example at location uh, v3 and then you look at the train and train passes and completes one complete cycle around the track then in order to keep eye contact with the train you are supposed to you must make a complete one complete rotation one complete revolution that is uh, 360 degrees in order to keep eye contact with the uh, train now same is the case if you stand at any other location inside the contour at uh, for example v2 and that is a zero you get the same uh, you have to make one complete rotation on your uh, you know you have to look uh, in order to keep eye contact with the, with the train you have to 
make one complete rotation of your eyes your head your uh, um, body etc in order to keep eye contact with the train otherwise you will not be able to look at it for the complete uh, cycle that it completes over the contour a that is not the requirement when you are outside this path when you are standing outside this closed path that is not the requirement that is not the case so whenever we have the poles or zeros inside the contour they there uh, when we do the mapping and when we map them to the complex to the other complex plane then each uh, of the point contributes an angle of 360 degree that is inside the that is inside the this map on in the left half plane each and every point that is a pole or zero that is inside this it contributes an angle of 360 degree if it is a zero that is it is in the uh, numerator of the transfer function it will its contribution would be positive and if it is in uh, a zero uh, it is a pole uh, and it's in the denominator of the um, transfer function then its contribution would, would be negative or in the opposite sense as compared to the contribution of the zero so the net contributions would be the difference of the two contributions the net contributions would be the difference of the two contributions uh, due to the zeros and the poles there is a lot of mathematical detail we are not going into that detail we are not covering that if you are interested you can refer to the book it's given in the book but at the moment what you need to keep in your mind is just this much information that i have given to you then on the basis of this we uh, without going into detail skipping some detail we can make a conclusion that the number of revolutions that the path makes in contour b is always equal to p minus z n is the number of revolutions p is the number of poles of 1 plus gh inside the contour a and uh, z is the number of zeros of 1 plus gh inside the contours so the number of poles of 1 plus gh they make a positive contribution in the rotation in the angle of uh, of the contour b and the zeros make negative con contribution in it that i've just said that they subtract the angles are subtracted so the number of uh, uh, the number of cycles the number of uh, uh, rotations in contour b is equal to the difference of number of uh, poles of 1 plus g h and the number of zeros of 1 plus g h p minus z here in this diagram which you can see on the right hand side we have only one clockwise rotation in contour b if we have more than uh, one rotation then you would see two loops or more than one loops here we have only one rotation uh, in the next slide we'll see that how we can uh, how uh, does that look like when we have more than one rotation about the origin so we have a, ro uh, a rotation we have complete rotation in contour b around the origin for the 1 plus gh and that depends on the poles and zeros that are inside the contour number a that is shown in the left hand side apart from this all this uh, there is another uh, point that you must first of all let this point sink in your mind pause the video rewind it and listen to whatever i have said in this slide up till now and then after that wait uh, for a few seconds and let this sink in your mind and after that listen to what i am saying right now poles of 1 plus gh are the equal to poles of gh when we are talking about the and we talk about the stable poles the poles that are on the uh, left hand side of the geomag axis they are stable poles so the poles of 1 plus gh are equal to the poles of gh the roots of 1 plus gh are also called the zeros of 1 plus gh and that is equal to the closed loop poles the roots of 1 plus gh 1 plus gh is called the characteristic function characteristic polynomial it's the denominator of the closed loop transfer function its roots when we equate it to zero and then solve it we get the roots these roots are also called the zeros of one plus gh 
and they are equal to the poles of the closed loop transfer function the closed loop transfer function is g upon 1 plus gh its poles are the roots of 1 plus gh and the roots of 1 plus gh are also called zeros of 1 plus gh don't get confused write these things separately and try to keep them in your mind and the second thing is that uh, the that was the second point r uh, i repeat point number one the poles of one plus gh is equal to poles of gh the poles of one plus gh are not the poles of the closed loop transfer function but poles of one plus gh are equal to the poles of gh the poles of the closed loop transfer function closed loop transfer function is g upon one plus gh that is equal to the zeros of one plus gh so this is the difference that you must keep in your mind the zeros of one plus gh are the uh, closed loop poles whereas the poles of one plus gh are the poles of gh equal to the poles of gh and this is uh, we will see again in the next slide uh, considering an example Now here whatever we have said in the previous slide is uh, understood by means of this example. Here in this slide you can see an example. We have open loop function gh and that is equal to s plus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator we have s plus 2, s plus 3. This open loop function has poles at minus 2, minus 3 and the 0 at minus 1. Is it clear? Now as we move forward the closed loop transfer function is g upon 1 plus gh g upon 1 plus gh the characteristic function is the denominator of the closed loop transfer function that is 1 plus gh so we have 1 plus s plus 1 in the numerator and then in the denominator s plus 2 s plus 3 so this 1 plus gh is like this now the roots of 1 plus gh are obtained by uh, equating 1 plus gh to 0 we, if we equate it to 0 and then we solve it we get the roots of the uh, 1 plus gh characteristic function those roots of the characteristic function are also the closed loop transfer function poles whereas the poles of 1 plus gh the poles of 1 plus gh are not the same as the poles of the closed loop transfer function here you can see the it is written in the second last line that poles of 1 plus gh are same as the poles of gh and you can see in the third last line over here it is written and note 1 plus gh is equal to then we have solved it and we have something in the numerator and then we in the denominator we have s plus 2 s plus 3 that something in the numerator is s plus 2 bracket s plus 3 plus 1 that is the numerator part and in the denominator we have s plus 2 and s plus 3 in the denominator s plus 2 and s plus 3 is the same as we have in open loop function gh so the denominator is same so the when we say the poles of 1 plus gh we have minus 2 and minus 3 the poles of the open loop poles of uh, this 1 plus gh that is characteristic function are minus 2 and minus 3 they are the same as the poles of the open loop function gh which is written in the top line over here but the roots of 1 plus gh are different the roots of 1 plus gh are obtained by equating this to 0 and when we have equated to 0 the denominator part that is s plus 2 s plus 3 gets cancelled out after being multiplied by 0 on the right hand side we are left with uh, s plus 2 bracket s plus 3 plus 1 if you open the bracket you should get s square plus 5s plus 7 if you equate this try to do, uh, to do this working right now s square plus 5s plus 7 equals to 0 when you equa equate it to 0 and then you find the roots of this polynomial you will get the roots of 1 plus gh and that they are also the roots of the closed loop transfer function they will be different from the poles of the open loop function they will be different from the poles of 1 plus gh so what you should remember is that poles of 1 plus gh are the same as the poles of gh and the roots of 1 plus gh are equal to the closed loop poles closed loop transfer functions poles that is uh, what, what is proved in this slide uh -huh. 
now let's focus on this Nyquist criterion for Nyquist criterion the contour or the closed path that we will select is as shown over here in figure 1024 the contour is the entire right half plane of the complex plane the right hand side of the complex plane including the j omega axis starting from the origin we move upwards along the j omega axis up to infinity and then when we reach infinity uh, I mean theoretically when we reach infinity then we turn towards right hand side in a circular path of infinite radius as we move keep on moving in a semicircle and the radius of that is infinity and then after moving we reach minus infinity down the negative x y axis we reach the negative in infinity uh, down the uh, negative imaginary axis as you can see over here and then we turn around and we start moving along the uh, j omega axis upwards towards the origin and when we reach the origin we complete one uh, we complete this contour and this encircles the entire right half plane that will be our uh, uh, contour or path that we will select for the Nyquist analysis in the uh, that we will see in the next few slides and secondly the function that we will consider f of s way for mapping because the plane that is shown over here is the s plane and we will map this thing into the f of s plane the f of s that we will use will be the characteristic function that will be 1 plus g h s shown over here so anything that comes inside this contour or map is uh, if will affect the shape of the uh, curve that we contour that we will get in the f of s plane the number of encirclements etc but one thing that you should note is that anything that is in this inside this contour means that any poles that is inside the contour of the uh, closed loop transfer function that will be unstable pole so uh, no pole should lie inside this contour anyways that is what we will see uh, separately but at the moment what you should remember is that our f of s is like that as shown over here in this slide and the contour the path that we will select is like this as shown in this figure number 1024 now here we do a small trick over here since uh, the plane uh, where we were uh, we were mapping the uh, path of the s plane the second plane that is f of s plane was 1 plus gh and we were looking at the encirclements of the origin whatever path we took on the uh, in the s plane when it was mapped in the f of s plane then that thing was uh, encircling the origin and the number of encirclements was equal to n is equal to p minus z and as we have seen in the previous slide now we do a trick in order to make things simple for us we since we say that the poles of 1 plus gh are equal to the poles of gh therefore why not uh, use gh instead of 1 plus gh that will make our things easy so we take our f of s to be equal to gh and we map the points in gh plane but when we do this we uh, uh, we keep one thing in our mind that instead of the encirclement of the origin here we will be looking at the encirclements of minus one point minus one point will be considered we will consider the rotations about the minus one point so what we have done is that actually we are mapping in one plus gh plane but we have shifted our uh, graph we are shift we have shifted our graph slightly towards left hand side so the origin of uh, in in gh plane we have the graph and that is a shifted version of one plus gh graph that shifted version is a bit shifted towards left hand side because we have one plus gh uh, plane now we have gh plane so instead of the origin uh, we uh, will look at the encirclements of the minus one point so all we have to do is that whenever we do the mapping we I try to look at the number of rotations about the minus one point 
uh, you don't need to worry a lot about it you don't need to worry at the moment that how we will be mapping how the working will be done how we have to do the calculation that is not your concern in this lecture we will separately see that when we will be solving the numerical examples numerical problems we will see in detail how these mapping is done that's very simple there are few thumb rules that we will follow we don't have to put each and every value of s uh, from the uh, complex plane which is very large from infinity to infinity no that, that is not the case we would not be doing that we will we have a few handy tips we will follow those handy tips a few approximations and we'll get a an approximate sketch of the nyquist plot uh, that's very simple and easy there's no anxiety and difficulty in it so be so try to focus on the thing and don't get too much worried and try to only focus on what i'm saying don't let, let your mind run here and there just precisely focus on what i'm saying you are just required to understand this thing nothing more than that nothing less than that and if you have any kind of question related to this thing feel free to ask what i have said is that uh, instead of uh, one plus gh we take the plane gh plane and in that we uh, look at the rotations or not of the origin but of the minus one point that's what i have said so far that is included in inside this red box in this slide now let's talk about the what is written in the next rectangle blue rectangle over here in this slide now listen to this what uh, this nyquist criterion thing is all about if a contour a that is the closed path that we had taken in the s plane that was from origin up to positive infinity then the entire very big arc with infinite radius covering the entire right half plane going to the negative infinity and then moving upward up to the origin the entire right half plane of the s plane that uh, its outline that is a contour and uh, it is mapped through a function that is gh and we know that what is mapping we have discussed it in the previous slides and gh is the open loop function and it is mapped through this uh, function into another complex plane that is gh plane we call that gh plane then the number of closed loop poles closed loop poles the number of closed loop poles is z Clo the number of closed loop poles means that the poles of the closed loop transfer function g upon 1 plus gh that is what we are concerned about we are worried about that they should not be on the right hand side of the jmac axis their number their quantity is represented by z and th they are those which are on the uh, uh, wrong side of the jmac axis z represents only those poles their number which are on the right hand side of jmag axis unstable po closed loop poles the poles of the closed loop transfer function and in the right half plane equals the number of open loop poles p and p represents the open loop poles the open loop poles that are in the right half plane the wrong side P is the that, that number of poles. Z is the number of closed loop unstable poles. Then the number of encirclements is n. The number of counterclockwise. The number of counterclockwise revolutions about the minus one point in the GH plane. When we draw the uh, that contour B, the second contour, that second closed path. Then that second closed path. The number of counterclockwise revolutions of minus one point are represented by n then we have this equation z is equal to p minus n that is what we should have we should have z is equal to zero we for a stable system z should be equal to zero z is the number of unstable poles of the closed loop transfer function the poles of the closed loop transfer function on the wrong side of the jmag axis that is on the right hand side of jmag axis that gives us the number of the unstable poles so z should be equal to zero but when z is not equal to zero z is obtained by p minus n uh, where p is the number of closed loop and uh, number of open loop poles in the right half plane the number of open loop poles in the right half plane and n is the number of counterclockwise revolutions we look at the number of revolutions from the plot second graph second plot 
and then we subtract that number from p and we get z z should ideally be equal to 0 for a stable system it's if it is not equal to 0 then we conclude from the working that the given system was unstable by without looking at, at the closed loop transfer function only by looking at the open loop function we conclude about the stability of the closed loop transfer function that is what this whole thing about now this mapping is called this mapping that we have done is called the Nyquist diagram or Nyquist plot of GH this is this whole thing about listen to this slide again try to let the things sink in your mind and uh, you just have to know about Nyquist this much what whatever is said in this slide is enough for you to note at the moment if you want to read the book and go into the detail you are welcome but the minimum requirement the requirement from you rather is that just try to let these things sink in your mind when we will be solving the example problems then you will understand these concepts fully so don't no need to worry at the moment now here in this slide you can see uh, four different graphs if we focus on the top two plots that is part a of this figure on the left side we have the complex plane s plane and in front of it on the right hand side we have g h plane let's first talk about the s plane and the s plane we have uh, three poles and two zeros three poles are lying on the x-axis and two zeros are lying one above and below it these are the poles and zeros of the uh, characteristic function 1 plus gh which are shown over here now the we know that the zeros of characteristic function the zeros of 1 plus gh they are the poles of the closed loop transfer function if you don't uh, recall then try to learn this thing memorize this thing remember this thing that uh, the zeros of 1 plus gh are the poles of the closed loop transfer function and the poles of the closed loop transfer function should never be on the right hand side of j omega axis now then next thing that you can see over here in this uh, plot is that there is a semicircle including the j omega axis that encompasses the entire right half plane and that is the nyquist path that is the contour a anything any closed loop pole lying inside this uh, contour means that the given system is unstable and uh, since the closed loop uh, transfer function poles are equal to the roots of the that is uh, uh, equal to the Mm, zeros of uh, 1 plus gh therefore the roots of 1 plus gh therefore the the zeros of 1 plus gh should also not be inside this uh, right half plane in the top figures nothing is inside the contour so there is no problem the zeros of 1 plus gh which are represented by two circles are on the left side of j mega axis one is above the x axis other is the below the GX, uh, x axis this is what i'm talking about the top left figure now when we map it using gh into the gh plane in front of it on the right hand side you can see that there is a contour b and the contour b a, uh, uh, is not just one single loop instead of that we have two loops the contour is in such a way that there is a smaller circle inside smaller con that is part of this contour so that contour is inside the bigger contour and they are encircling something but that something is not minus one minus one is you can see out of this contour that is on the left hand side of it so the number of encirclements the number of encirclements of this minus one point is n and that is equal to zero in this case these uh, these this contour b is not encircling minus one point therefore we take n is equal to zero and 
from here what we can see or conclude is that the information that is normally not given to us and we we are supposed to find in problems is that we find out the value of z that is the number of unstable closed loop poles number of poles that lie on the j left hand side of j mega axis that is normally not given in the problems but over here in this problem we are given that thing we are given the zeros of 1 plus gh as you can see over here and uh, therefore we say that z is equal to the number of unstable closed loop poles which is also equal to the unstable zeros of gh that is that z number is equal to 0 because uh, no closed loop pole is inside the this contour as you can see over here in the top figures therefore on the right hand side you see that the uh, number of encirclements of the minus one point is also zero and what is not given in this uh, situation over here are the poles of open loop function gh that is p the quantity of unstable poles of gh that is not shown over here but uh, normally in problems we are given the open loop function gh and from there we see that how many of the open loop function poles are unstable from there we get this number p we just have to make the plot and find out the value of n the number of encirclements of the minus one point and from there then we subtract p minus n and we get the value of z and z should be equal to zero if z is not zero this means that the given system is unstable that is the whole idea right now you don't need to worry about anything just try to understand whatever has been said nothing more than that is required from you just try to follow what I have said. When we will be solving the problems, then only you will understand more how we do this, how these things are calculated. At the moment, you don't need to worry about anything. Just try to follow what I am saying. The amount of information you need to understand and absorb is uh, equal to what I have just said in this slide and the previous slides. So you don't have to worry more than that. Things are very simple. You don't need to and make them extra complicated by um, letting your mind rush here and there uh, if this is so then how will be that thing and so on and so forth when the time comes you will see that how uh, we handle things when we will solve the problem you will understand very clearly that how we solve the problem how we calculate p how n is calculated z is calculated at the moment this is just try to we are giving you a, an introduction of the nyquist and this part is a little bit uh, hard but later part is easy that's just mathematics we will not be plotting the exact uh, nyquist uh, plot there we will be using some tips some thumb rules some handy methods some handy ways and then we will be sketching the plot and making the encirclements we don't plot the exact uh, nyquist plot that can be done on a computer program in matlab we just use some tips some thumb rules some shorthand methods and then we get the plot so don't you don't need to worry about it of course there's a learning curve and that for that a person feels a bit of pressure try to overcome it nothing is difficult over here just a little bit of interest and concentration now come to the b part of the figure in b part of the figure on the left hand side what you see in the complex plane is that there are two zeros of one plus gh inside the contour that is bad thing bad thing because the zeros of one plus gh are, are, are actually the closed loop transfer function poles and the closed loop transfer function poles are in the wrong region that is on on the right hand side of the jmeg axis inside the contour so all the bad area has been inclo enclosed inside a contour that is contour a now when that is the situation you can see that in the figure in the mapped figure in gh on the gh plane when we put the values of the everything this whole map this whole contour into the function gh and then we uh, plot it on another complex plane that is our gh plane we get something like shown over here in the bottom right graph you can see that the contour is encircling the minus one point and it is encircling two times if you stand at uh, the um, point minus one and look at the contour you can uh, and we can do that by drawing a line if you draw a line passing 
through minus one point and cutting the uh, contour this Nyquist plot in the Nyquist plot you can see that the line cuts this uh, contour B twice two times this is how we find the number of encirclements of minus one point you just have to draw a line passing through the minus one point and the number of times that is cut by this um, plot that gives us the number of encirclements of minus one point and minus one is inside this um, uh, contour so this means that the number of encirclements of minus one point is n is equal to two we have two encirclements now if we had the information about the unstable poles of gh open loop function there and that is p then by subtracting n from p that is p minus n we get the number of unstable closed loop poles that is the value of z and on the basis of that we say that the given system is stable or unstable if z is not equal to zero then the system is unstable if z is equal to zero then this given system is stable so that's the whole idea so here we conclude our today's lecture feel free to ask any questions any queries anything you are not able to understand thank you